Did you already miss the bottom of this economic recession? Yes. Yes, you did. What's up, you guys? You're watching B2B Fusion. I'm your host, Derek West. On B2B Fusion, it's our mission to inspire you to take imperfect action on your business and your finances using the power of technology. Help us in that mission by pounding that like button and dropping us a comment if you like what we have to say, and especially if you don't like what we have to say. I mean, we're not perfect here, and we appreciate the input from our viewers to help us improve and deliver the content that is needed in today's corona crisis-induced world. So the economy has been in the toilet for a couple of months now. Experts are expecting anywhere between 16% on the low end and 30% on the high end for an unemployment rate through the summer and fall time period. Stimulus checks are flying into the Federal Reserve for entities large and small with no end in sight. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there are more and more talks of more and more stimulus, leading to what experts believe will be massive inflation, if not hyperinflation. Inflation that politicians of all political stripes, left, right, conservative, liberal, all across the globe feel will be quote unquote Good for the economy, so long as employment can get back to regular levels. Truth is, we'll pay for the inflation sooner or later, either with a worse economy or a dollar that is much less valuable. There is no free lunch. But wait, there's more. Companies large and small, even with all the bailout funds, are still not guaranteed to make it out of this mess alive, as this whole hysteria over the disease that shall remain nameless, i.e. the corona crisis, is changing habits of people from all walks of life. It's forcing the adoption of a culture of stay at home and order in, rather than go out and have a good time. One could argue that, in that industries from leisure travel, including airlines, cruise lines, hotels, and the like, to commercial real estate, including office buildings, malls, and shopping centers, even gyms and fitness centers, are all going to go into radical shifts of their business models. After this is all over, will people even want to go out and eat and have a good time? Or will they prefer to stay home and literally Netflix or YouTube and chill? That begs the question, though. Have we already hit the bottom of this current crisis? And are we on our way back up? Have you missed the quote unquote buying opportunity? Here's a hard truth that not a lot of people are gonna tell you. The truth is, if you click the like button, it means that you found this video interesting and informative or both. And if you hit the subscribe button and or notification bell, you'll get even more videos just like these. Oh wait, my notes are out of order. Eh, apologize for that. Seriously though, the truth is, drum roll please. Nobody really knows if we've hit the bottom of the market for this crisis, but there are signs that the markets may be on their way back up until the next crisis causes the printing presses to fire out of control. I'm not sure if you've been paying attention, but the stock market has been increasing steadily since about the 6th of April for the S&P 500 and the 23rd of March for the Dow Jones, as well as the NASDAQ. I'm sure we all remember the panic that gripped everybody during mid to late February as market drops of seemingly thousands of points, again, seemingly happened daily. The bottom felt like it was months away, and some crazy predictions were suggesting that the Dow Jones Industrial Average could drop below 10,000 for the first time in decades. Indeed, it had fallen below 1,800, which was a major milestone to the post-housing crisis stock market. So one wonders, with all the bad news out there, why the optimism among those looking to invest their money? For one, the talks of opening the country back up are beginning to move along. A couple of states, including the one that I currently reside in, are discussing opening up restaurants and other types of shops in early May. Still waiting on them to open up the gyms, however. Other states are close, or are at least beginning to show plans of how they will open up slowly but surely. There are signs of life for even California, as many within the state, including the ever unpredictable Elon Musk, are insisting that the economy be opened up. You gotta give it to him. The man's been known to buck a trend or two. And in addition to that, there is actually a proposed cure in the minds of some that could alleviate some of the symptoms of the dreaded coronavirus. Maybe cure it? <gasps> On CNBC's website, a periodical of note, it says, and I quote, by the way, I'm a poet and I know it. A study of Gilead's remdesivir drug conducted by the National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Diseases met its primary endpoint. The drug maker said, lifting expectations for a potential coronavirus treatment. Gilead also released the results of its own study, which showed improvements in patients taking remdesivir to treat the virus. It goes on to say, The study tracked two groups of patients who were hospitalized with COVID-19. One group received a five-day treatment of remdesivir, while the other took the drug for 10 days. The researchers said more than half of the patients in both treatment groups were discharged from the hospital by 14 days. These data are encouraging as they indicate that patients who received a shorter five-day course of remdesivir experienced similar clinical improvements as patients who received a 10-day treatment course. 
Well, that's encouraging to say the least. Of course, there are more trials to come, and by no means is their drug the wonder drug that could cure corona, but it is a positive sign. And that's what investors are looking for in this economy, positive signs. Shares in Gilead Sciences have been up about $10 since late February. If you've got that stimulus check just sitting around in your bank account collecting moss, it might be something you want to consider. By the way, I called that shot here on BTP Fusion. Again, if you're not subscribed and hitting that notification bell, you're just flat out missing out on all the juiciest of nuggets. So like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. I can't stress that enough. Anyway, the question is, have you already missed the bottom of this particular crisis? And the answer is, to the discerning individual, is that it's impossible to know. But all the signs are pointing to yes. But does that mean that you should worry? Well, no. Just because the bottom has come doesn't mean that you've missed out on all the possible life-changing investment opportunities. I.e., because we hit the bottom doesn't mean the volatility is over. Stocks are likely to rise and fall quite a bit as news, both good and bad, keeps coming out as our situation continues to develop and states and countries and economies start to open up. And in that process, pick themselves up off the ground and dust themselves off. Meaning, opportunities will still be there while everyone is waiting for the markets to get back to their old ways. If you look out for quality stocks that were hammered by the corona crisis, you can see opportunities to buy in on some pretty good investments. Think about stocks like PayPal. The sheltering at home trends that have swept the US and the globe have meant that the trend of online shopping and more importantly, online purchasing and payments have gotten even more popular. In other words, a trend that was already accelerating at a rapid pace got an even bigger boost, if you can believe that. And PayPal is in a position to benefit from that trend, along with other payment platforms like Stripe. Stripe is private right now and may or may not be looking at an IPO. Quick side note, not a huge fan of IPOs, but that is a topic for another video. Other stocks to think about during this trend, other stocks to think about during this trend include Activision slash Blizzard. When you're at home and you're feeling lousy, you can always go downtown, except when you're under arrest due to a global pandemic. In that event, you can flick on your gaming console or sweet gaming rig and play some awesome video games, which you more than likely suck at. Activision Blizzard is part of a group of companies taking advantage of this trend. If you think about it though, Activision is part of the old guard of the video game industry, producing games that aren't as favorable with today's youth market. Think of titles like Call of Duty Modern Warfare. By the way, I can't believe that I'm so old that Call of Duty Modern Warfare is considered old school. I remember when it wasn't cool because it wasn't Halo. But then again, I'm a first wave millennial. Side notes aside, the company has recently released Call of Duty Warzone which you can consider the answer to the free-to-play and battle royal rivals of its day. You know, titles such as, uh, what's that one called? I can't think of the name of that video game to save my life. The good news for them is that it attracted more than 50 million players within one month after its March 10th launch. Illustrating to all the wisdom behind the old cliche, if you can't beat them, join them. This next doc you've probably heard of all over the place, but let me get in on the action. Zoom video communications. There are a ton of reasons to like Zoom, not the least of which it allows you to be in communication with your team if you have one, or just with friends and family. Schools and businesses being on lockdown has obviously helped their bottom line as they have expanded their user base from 10 million to more than 200 million users in less than three months. Some of those users are bound to be paying customers at some point, only helping their revenues. What's not helping their revenues is Zoom bombing, i.e. disrupting meetings, <laughs> disrupting important business meetings with obscenities, racism, and just the right amount of pornography. Obscenities, racism, and pornography are all the sorts of things you won't find on this channel. If you're looking for that sort of thing, sorry. But if you're not, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell for more great content just like this. And don't forget to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and comment with stocks that you feel are going to go gangbusters in the coming weeks now that the bottom is behind us. And remember, a goal without a plan is a wish. A goal with a plan and no action is a wish list. Take action on your business and personal finances using the power of technology. And we'll catch you next time. Peace. Fortnite. I can't believe I couldn't remember Fortnite. Take it easy.